What does it take to be a successful entrepreneur? A dangerous amount of coffee and a ton of grit. My name is Jason Tracy, and every week I interview business leaders to share their stories, life lessons, failures, and advice with you. Welcome to Coffee and Grit. What is up? What is up? What is up? It's my favorite day of the week. I love being back in the studio. I have another killer guest, of course, in the studio uh, with me here. And uh, man, Grant, I told you we we're going to talk about fantasy football. You uh, did. I remember. I remember. I think it was week one or week two. Grant asked me. Are you done? Like, <laughs> are you are you officially done with your fantasy football season, or is there hope? And I said, "There's always hope." Last year, I started off one and five, and I ended up winning winning it all. This year, I was like, "Man, I think I cursed myself." I started off zero oh and five, won a game, then lost another game, so I was one and six. And I'm like, "This is," and then <laughs> I'm like, "This is done." Like, I'm not I'm not going to come. I have climbed and scratched and clawed and I'm now in second, like I'm going to win tonight. I'm a good 60 points ahead. Uh, and he's got TJ Hawkinson. So unless TJ Hawkinson has the game of his life, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm winning. I'm on a uh, six game winning streak and I'm now six and six, five game win streak, six and six climbed into second place, making the playoffs. Like that's man, you don't give up. And the, and the only reason I'm sharing this is because this is so it's relatable. We talked about it when at the time it's so relatable to entrepreneurship, to business. Like it's just fantasy football, but you talk about like we all, anybody that plays fantasy football talks about, I hate this thing because there's so <laughs> many things that are with, out of your control, you know, injuries and just all the things, you know, teams that are bad and all this kind of stuff that can that can happen in in the midst of the game that just it, no matter how smart you are this you know it, it you can't control it and that's the same thing with business and life no sometimes no matter how smart you are no matter how good your product is no matter how talented you are there's some shit that happens and it yeah. pours down on you and and you've got to figure out how to navigate and stay uh stay the course and so I think every year I watch people that get into fantasy football and they get a they get a losing record and they just abandon it and they don't stay with it. And I'm like, no, I'm never out of this. And I'm like, just keep going, keep going, keep patching the holes and figuring it out. And and boom, I'm going for another Super Bowl win. So if you're sitting there, hey, either your fantasy football team or your business life, you got this. Just make the adjustments, figure out, hey, maybe you're maybe, maybe you have a show. Joe, uh, Joe Burrow, like I did, and he's out for the season. You know, you just make your adjustments and figure it out. And, uh, same thing in life. So that is very nice advice. It would be very funny if Hawk did go nuts tonight and we're listening to this a week and a half later. <laughs> he goes, he's put up 70. <laughs> I hope not, Jason. I, I, I wish you luck too. But it would be kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> this would be a great clip. <laughs> It'd be a great clip to remind. That you always got to knock on the wood and you can never count your wins. Uh, same thing in sales. You can never count your sales. Someone might say that they're going to buy from you. Uh, it doesn't mean that until they do, don't count it. So we'll tie this into, into, into real life somehow. But I am super excited to have Mary Beth Rochikis in the studio today. And I've, I've, I met Beth, uh, Mary Beth um, almost six years ago now is when I, when I started my business. She, uh, I got to meet her through the chamber. Um, she's a chamber ambassador. And I'm, so I'm su super excited to be able to put a, a spotlight on Mary Beth's difference because I see her being, seeing her in this community being the difference out there putting spotlights out on, on people. Um, and so Mary Beth, welcome to the coffee and grit studio. It's been a little bit of time since we've had this on the schedule. So I'm yeah. super excited. Thank you so much. I think we actually met when you were working at Verizon and Gracie was working there too, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Because I, um, I think I welcomed the store, the, you know, the business to the chamber. Cause that's one of the things I do. I'm an ambassador with the chamber. And I think it was then initially. And then you and I had another conversation when you started off on your own business. Might be. I didn't, I wasn't affiliated with any of the Brighton oh, no. Verizon. So. Okay. Well, maybe I met you through Gracie. It, that's very possible. Yeah. I remember yeah. that you two knew each other yeah. when I, when I first met you. So yeah. 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 So how, how did Mama Bear Productions, how did that, how did, how did that all start? Well, um, so I'll give the abbreviated version. So um, back in 96, uh, my son was almost two and I still hadn't lost all the weight from having him. Found a company that uh, focused on weight management, went through the program. I was successful. People asked me what I was doing. So I was encouraged to do it. You know, it was a very hobbyish level business. Um, but then uh, my husband and I decided to have a second child and I couldn't take some of the products while I was pregnant. So uh, I'll call them fat flushers. So fast forward after I had my daughter 
and I went back to work part time. Now I have two kids in daycare, and the budget was a little bit more. Um, it wasn't as it was smaller. <laughs> yeah. So I couldn't go back on the whole program. So I just did the fat flushers and I didn't really educate myself as to what was in them. And, um, it really put me in a horrific mental and health state. And, uh, I call myself the Dr. Jekyll, and Mrs. Hyde, because you just didn't know what Mary Beth you were going to get. And my girlfriend got into Shackley cause that's the company I partner with. And she asked me questions. She goes, well, what's in those? What's in the products you're taking? Instead of, hey, you need to take this, mm. you know, and I'm like, well, I don't know. They're natural, which that's such a overused word. And so I looked into it and uh, the main ingredient was Chinese Mao Wang, which now this is back in fast forward to uh, um, 97 and Chinese Mao Wang is equivalent to a Fedra, which the U.S. eventually banned in the United States because it was giving people heart attacks and some were fatal. So, um, the thing is, is that it, did it flush the fat out in my body? Yeah, I was losing some weight real quick after I had my daughter, but it also flushed the good things out. And that's why I was in such a bad state. So when I found that out, and of course that was pre, you could order internet, I, um, couldn't get my money back. So I threw out $300 worth of product, um, back in late 97, early 98. I said, if I, now that I know what's in them and what it's done to me, I can't sell them to anyone else. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. So, um, then I started on three products from Shackley and, uh, you know, the protein powder, it was so bad. I really didn't like it, but my, um, how much better it made me feel superseded the dislike of the taste. Cause I added stuff in there, you know, vanilla, cinnamon, whatever. Yeah. Um, but it, it helped me so much. So like within a week I could even feel the difference in 30 days. People are like, what are you doing? I think they actually wanted to be around me again. <laughs> <laughs> so. They're testing the fence. <laughs> Which like, Mary Beth is this? <laughs> right? right? Yeah. Um. Is it holding? <laughs> <laughs> so um, then, uh, you know, just kept using the products, feeling better. My family was started to use some of the products. And then the company I was with, what uh, my main income, um, because I was just a consumer at that point, actually, uh, they were moving to another state and we weren't going to do that because my husband had his own business here. So I was uh, fortunate enough to become a stay-at-home mom. And at that time, I was going to go to school and further my education. So when my kids were in school all day, because they were only a year and a half and four at the time, um, I could be more marketable in the workforce. Well, we just started using more of the products. Everybody's feeling good. I'm like, you know what? I want to help people so they don't encounter what happened to me. Yeah. I want to educate them. You know, let them make their decision what's right for them, but give them all of the information, not just something random that you can pick up off the counter in a store. And, uh, you know, the company is just great. It's really helped me. Um, you know, so that's what started uh, my business and, um, you know, being able to do it out of my home. I have a home office. And uh, it's it's brought around so many wonderful things, you know, meeting all these people. Um, my girlfriend and I hired a business coach in 2004. So that's where the name of my business comes from, because um, I'm a successful bear hunter. Yeah. And uh, my friend said, well, we don't know any other females that hunt bear. You have to incorporate that in your business name. And so uh, that's why I was Mama Bear Productions. And then my very intelligent daughter, who was only seven at the time, said, Mom, it's the same initials as your name. And I'm like, perfect. Oh, my God. I didn't I've realize it. put that together. <laughs> that, is, that is so mind-blowing. That's awesome. The mind of a seven-year-old right. can see that so clearly. Oh, if you knew my daughter, she would be. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so, uh, Anna, so, yeah, she's she's pretty sharp on that stuff <laughs> at four years old she was my backseat driver i'm like what oh where are we going mom well we're going here well you're going the wrong way you're four in a car seat in the back seat <laughs> I'm like, no, we're just going a different way. <laughs> just testing you. <laughs> so yeah. she's pregnant now. So we'll see how those, that comes back around. <laughs> you know, she'll be just like her. 
<laughs> that is so awesome. So I was wondering, so I, that was a conversation I was having with Gracie today because when you originally approached me and asked, you know, talked about being on Coffee and Grit, you'd, uh, you'd asked about the bear hunting. And so I'm like, yeah. I've, I don't know if we've ever talked about how you named your, your business. And so mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm so curious if that ties in from the bear hunting standpoint. Yep. Yep. Um, 2000 was the first time I went bear hunting and uh, I had a very unique situation. I was out there for my gosh, like 50 minutes, bear came in. I got it. We're good. Got to go golfing the next day. (laughs) (laughs) So um, so then in um, 2004 was really like a, um, that was my year. I think I could say, because, you know, found the business coach, got my business name. Um, I love that business coach. Um, I'm going to share this link with her. Polly English, I still remember you. She's still a good friend. And um, so uh, she taught me how to, you know, wake, asleep, drunk or sober. You are on your game. You remember who you are and what you do. And I'm like, okay. Most of the time I am sober. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, but yeah, 2004. But just in case you're prepared. (laughs) I I know I'm on my way to, I'm like less than 10 minutes from my CirrusNet networking meeting and people go, Mary Beth, you always know what to say. I'm like, yeah, some, there's a lot of times I'm just preparing it on my way to the meeting. (laughs) I'm like, Oh, that sounds good. (laughs) <laughs> so uh i'm glad they think that though that that's very complimentary but yeah so um yeah 2004 successful bear hunt again i actually uh got a 600 pound bear that year so my husband and i have a second home up in the up and that's where we're hunting so yeah we're at UP. um just east of manistique okay mm-hmm. so yeah that was exciting that that took a, a little bit longer because you know uh that bear being so large there was a reason he was that large he wasn't stupid so, uh, yeah, it was like a scary movie. You know, everything was absolutely quiet. Yeah. And then, cause nothing's around when something that big is around. And, um, I remember, you know, cause you're trying to not think about having to use the bathroom yeah. as women and, and I'm like, take a little nap and I'm like, no, all of a sudden I just sat up. I, I can't tell you, I cannot explain how I, how that happened but I just sat up and all of a sudden we heard a twig break and then another twig break and then there's this big black mess walking in and uh so I got my gun ready and I'm shaking you know and um my husband's whispering in my ear shoot it shoot it in my head I'm like shut up shut up (laughs) and I uh remembered Lamaze (laughs) so that came in handy (laughs) and uh in composure and I shot it and it turned a bit and then it dropped but you want to wait because when you shoot something that big yeah, you want to make, make sure. sure it's gone <laughs> I mean you know deceased <laughs> it's always my least favorite part of the scary movies you know when they like shoot it and then they like get down and like take their time <laughs> around the thing that you know is going to get back up yeah no it didn't so, that was, so it was a bit of a challenge to drag no, 600 pounds. Of I was gonna say, how do you then get it back? Well, how we found this place is uh, my one brother has lived up there for decades. And so he knew the, the seller and uh, he has grown kids because um, I was mentioning before, you know, I come from a family of six. So uh, I have four older brothers. So he's quite a bit. We have like two generations of nieces and nephews in my family. So his adult son uh, came over and helped me at two ATVs with this um, bear scrunched in this <laughs> trailer and, uh, yeah, drove it all the way back to the house. And we were at the farthest part of our property too. So that was, um, interesting. I got to walk all the way back. I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute. I shot it. Don't I get to ride? No, the bear is too heavy. And if we add you on there, I'm like, what are you saying? You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I said, okay, it's all good. The adrenaline was going anyway. Oh, I and, bet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. So what got, what got you into hunting bears? Did you hunt before? Or? No, the, um, in 2000 was the first time. My husband's been a hunter since he was a teenager. And uh, in Michigan, you have to apply for points because typically you don't get a license the first time. And it's gotten even more strict over the course of years. So in 2000, I applied and I got one, which is rare. But I think they were, their intention is to get more women hunting sense yeah so uh yeah he wasn't getting a license and uh you know we wanted to fill the freezer because we do eat the meat 
And um, yeah, so I went out there and he was in the blind with me. Uh, our kids were little, so they stayed at home with friends and family. And um, yeah, went up there and, and I'm like, this is great. It's a great de-stressor. And I still remember when women go, well, how can you shoot a bear? I go, because I can't shoot my kids. <laughs> <laughs> they look at me. I'm like, come on, I'm just kidding. Like, I would never do that. Uh, but yeah, it's a great distressor. You know, win-win. You're out in, the, in nature, and I've learned so much. My husband is extremely knowledgeable in hunting, and I've learned a lot, and just being out there, and it's calm, and it's peaceful, and... And when you have little ones, you really appreciate those moments. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. It's just kind of like um, sol- solace, like being out mm-hmm. there, being mm-hmm. because you have to be quiet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. How long are you usually out there when you go? Um, usually go out there around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And um, uh, we usually are out of the blind between 7.30 and 8. Depends, of course, when, you know dark is. And where we're at, actually, if you think of Central Standard Time, because they did try to get the Upper Peninsula and Central Standard Time at one point. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. But um, yeah. So it uh, there it's lighter out later up there. In fact, I've been up there quarter eleven at night in the summertime, and it's still light out. That's amazing. I know it is. So um, yeah. So you're out there for a good, you know, four to five hours, depending on when you are successful and you can leave. Before we get back at it, a quick shout out for our sponsor, Playbook Builder, powered by AI. This show has always been about giving the resources and the tools to small business owners in order to grow and scale your businesses successfully. And so I'm so excited to partner with a company that does just that. If you've listened and heard any of our guests, you've heard talking about building process, developing and training, building culture, all such important pieces in order to building a great company. Well, Playbook Builder, powered by AI, has come along and revolutionized the game on how you can do that for your team and people. Whether you're onboarding new people, training and developing, continued training and developing, you're looking to scale your business or eventually sell, or most importantly, you're looking to build a legacy as a visionary. Playbook Builder, powered by AI, is able to solve those problems for you. For me, as a consultant, I've been able to plug in, and it's so amazing what I do for clients. I can now leave a legacy. And so, for example, I'm next week training a new hire for a company, and I've been able to build out the next month of her training program using Playbook Builder powered by AI. The cool thing about the AI, what does that do? What's the hardest part of building out a process? taking this step by step and making it easy it easy to learn what AI, the ai piece does is you can actually type in what process it is whether you want to onboard if you want to onboard a new employee type in onboard a new employee in what type of industry you're in and the ai will put together a a foundation for you to build out your playbook. It is absolutely incredible. But don't take my word for it. Head on over to playbookbuilder.com and these guys have set it up to where you can take this for a test run with no obligations. Plug in what kind of playbook you want to build. If it's a sales training playbook, for example, plug that in in the description. And in the description, you can also put in what kind of industry you're in and then hit generate and it will generate a playbook for you. Impress from there and you can take a 30-day free trial of the playbook system altogether. Okay, so you've had you had those two successful hunts right out of you know your first couple of years. How, how how you know over the course of the years, how often do you do you shoot a bear? Well, um, I did get another one in two thousand eight, and then we had to take a break from hunting because uh, Hannah, my daughter, played uh, amateur hockey, and the girls' hockey season starts early. So uh, it's it's a lot of preparation. I mean, we started in August to put bait out there to bring the bear in, and and then it's every weekend, you know, and then you've got your first weekend, and right after Labor Day is when you can start hunting. So the next time we were able to hunt, because then she uh, actually played college women's hockey, so it wasn't until 2019 that I got my fourth bear. Um, yeah, so. Uh, but, yeah, you have to typically accrue points and it depends on what week of the hunting season. Cause there's uh, technically three weeks, uh, you know, third week you can, it's easier to get a license. Uh, but by that time, you know, bears are a little skittish, you know, from the hunting and stuff. Um, so your chances are reduced, but, uh, yeah, my husband, uh, he actually got a 475 pound bear with a bow 
back in 91. So he's in the record books too. Wow. Yeah. So it's, um, you know, there's so much to learn and it would be really nice. So my daughter hunts, my son hunts, uh, they both have been successful in bear hunting. Um, and you know, we do other hunting too, of course, you know, deer hunting. I've been uh, wild boar hunting. I actually got a wild hog at a ranch up in Ubley, Michigan. Have you ever heard of Ubley, I Michigan? Have. Okay, yeah. really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Not too many people do, but I'm finding more and more that do. Um, that was fun. I'd never done that before, so that was fun. Um, but yeah, so you know, just recently, I was successful in getting a, a deer in bow season. So I didn't get anything since well, the wild hog I got last year. But as far as deer hunting or up at our property now since 2019, but yeah. Yeah. So at the beginning, I, I was talking about fantasy football and kind of drawing that comparison to like business and life. How do you, what, what kind of lessons and, and, you know, comparisons from bear hunting and your, your journey to that? Have you been able to apply because you do learn so much? How have you, have you been able to apply to business and life? Yeah. You know, um, well, you have to have focus, uh, be prepared, right. Um, uh, be patient and, um, have your eye on the target, literally, right? I mean, any business person has to have that. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, like when I got that big bear, first day, nothing, second day, nothing, third day, you know, like I'm some, that, that, that bear's coming in today. My husband's looking at me like, yeah, why do you say that? I don't know. I can't tell you. I just, I'm feeling it, you know, and I think that we feel Absolutely. when we're being successful. Yeah. Right. Like last month. So every month is, is a monthly accumulation of my volume. And, um, on the, the, whatever Monday that was in October, it was probably, um, I don't know, like I had 12 days left in the month. Yeah. I'll just say that. And I wasn't near what I wanted to. Well, by the end of the month, I tripled my volume, which had never happened to me before. So I was pretty elated, you know? But um, it was due diligence. It was support from the company and and my doing too, right? I mean, yeah. I just didn't sit in the recliner and say, hey, it's coming. I want to hit this goal, right. manifest it, yeah. and do nothing to get there. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think with any business, I and mean, we fall into that. I mean, I never envisioned myself being an entrepreneur. No, I've, I've been, uh, well, I, most teenagers work at a fast food restaurant. I, it, I don't know if that's still true, but at least when I was growing up, it was. So, you know, started out at McDonald's and I went to Arby's, moved up in the ranks in Arby's. And, and back then, you know, college wasn't, you know, um, the choice as much as it is today. Uh, went through a travel agency school, actually went to a bartender school. Mm. Yeah. Learned a lot there. <laughs> and then um, I, you know, went into office work and that's where uh, the company then that I worked for which was an amazing company. It really was. I, I loved working there. Uh, it was really too bad that they moved, but excellent benefits. You know? what, kind yeah. of, what kind of company was that? It was an insurance company. Okay. They did break off and sell a portion of it uh, to another company. And then um, it was Alexander Hamilton Life Insurance Company, uh, a subsidiary of Household International. And then when they sold off the life and annuity policies then it was just the affiliated side so like if you got a charge card at art van you could get insurance on that in case something happened to you you know uh, passed away or dis disabled whatever yeah. that was the department i worked in oh okay and then i ended up being a systems research analyst which was basically translating from the it department to the claims examiners to the software company but that was fun i liked that job that's awesome. So, so from going and doing that, from you, from that experience, and, and then you, you start, you ever thought about being an entrepreneur? How do you go out there and you start meeting people? I, as I see you now entrenched in the community. Did you know anybody before and how did you get out there? Um, no, it was suggested because my girlfriend and I worked closely together and, and, uh, you know, I started out with the Heartland Chamber, which it's not anything like it is now today. They, they have a very successful chamber. Um, so back then, so that was in 2005, uh, 
And it was hard not to stay with that chamber because my kids went to Heartland schools, so I felt connected that way as well. Well, then um, the Greater Brighton Area Chamber of Commerce was significantly larger, so I joined that chamber. So it'll be yeah, 18 years next month, wow. or in January, rather. Yeah, that I've been a member of the chamber. So that's how I met a lot of people. Um, you know, I was in other networking groups, and... They just uh, didn't work well for me. It was good, but what I like about Sarasnet is that I never have to run the meeting. Yeah, I can yep. just show up, right? Focus on my business, focus on other helping other businesses and providing referrals to them. So, Steve, uh, well, shout out to him. Has uh, he really created? He the gets best one concept. per episode. Yeah, <laughs> there you go, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, just the best concept. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. It, uh, I'm glad you touched on serious because it's just, it's been that, that, um, that group that, uh, that, you know, I hate to say networking, but that, 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 that thing for me that has, it's been, you know, chamber's been great and all these different things, but just the components of serious net. And I, I think all the best people from all the groups that I've been a part of, you know, whether it's chamber or other networking groups, all the best people from those groups are, I feel like are part of serious net. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would agree. You know, their, their heart and soul is in it and we yeah. always have fun in our group. So I'm in two different serious net groups. One is for my business. And then, uh, I'm in one with Steve, uh, in zoom on Tuesday mornings at eight. And I represent, uh, a nonprofit that my husband and I are very involved in. In fact, he is the current president of the board. Hmm. Um, it's all volunteers. There's no pay. Yeah. So it's called Passing Along the Heritage. Uh, and the acronym is PATH. And it's the hunting version of Make-A-Wish is a great way to explain it. So we help kids with life-threatening illnesses, disabilities, uh, to be able to successfully hunt on private ranches in Michigan. And uh, we do have opportunities for veterans with the same situations. Uh, but yeah, my husband actually found it because he's like, you know, I'm, I've had a lot of bear hunting. I've enjoyed it, but now I'd like to gift it to someone else. And he found PATH. And it was wow. actually founded by the, um, one of the first people in Michigan out of doors. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you, we've met some amazing people. And they have all of these... Can I elaborate on that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm okay. like, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm going to ask you more questions. So, <laughs> okay. yeah. Um, they have all this equipment that hunters who cannot hold a gun because of lack of upper body strength can hunt. And it's, uh, you know, my husband can always explain it better. But anyhow, I won't give you all the technical names. But they have this, um, they put the gun in this specific type of tripod tripod and then they have this joystick where they can you know uh, angle the target and everything so they can get an accurate shot and then there's two buttons one for the hunter and then one for the guide and they have to press it simultaneously to release the bullet from the gun wow. then they actually have another uh, it's a scope that you can put on a gun and there's an app in there so it'll feed into this screen within the blind so that a blind hunter can hunt safely and successfully. And so it, it shows what the hunter would have seen, could they see, up on the screen. And, uh, and then the guy just, you know, says, okay, shoot now. Whoa. Yeah, it's really amazing. That's got to be incredible for somebody that can't see to be able to go through that experience. Yeah. I'm getting chills just as I'm explaining this because yeah. it is really cool. Yeah. It's, uh, we have, um, there's been two brothers who were born with their sight, but then as they got into, uh, the one brother, it, it affected him at a little bit younger age than the younger brother, but, um, it was gradual, you know, they lost their eyesight gradually, but these kids are amazing. I just want to tell you, cause I'm just so impressed. They run track, the one bowls, the other one used to wrestle. I mean, they're not letting yeah. this deter them. So how inspirational is that? So inspirational. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was uh, it was uh, it was really good. In fact, the the most recent bear hunt up at our property property because we take two hunters up there every September, and um, 
The most recent one is Leah, who's 15 years old, and she is osteogenesis imperfecta. Took me a bit to remember that. (laughs) And she is this incredible girl. So her bone density, she really doesn't have much bone density. She's had over 200 fractures in her lifetime. But she's, so her head is the normal size shape of a 15-year-old, but her body is the size of a two-year-old. So she's never known what it's like to walk or do all these other things. And she always wanted to hunt with her dad. And uh, Path has given her that opportunity, not just once, but twice. So she, she shot a big buck on the one ranch. And then she, she, shot, she shot a bear. I can't talk. <laughs> shot a bear uh, at our home. And her whole family came. Seven of them. She's the oldest of five. <laughs> it was a very busy cabin. <laughs> <laughs> But then they all got to see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it was amazing. They came back and I I went to pick her up like you would normally like a two-year-old, right? And her dad goes, nope, this is the way you have to pick it up. So pick her up so that she doesn't, you know, break a bone. And uh, and I give her a hug and then later on her dad goes, you know, you're the only third person that's ever picked her up. And I'm like, no, I probably should have asked if I could pick her up. But I was... Felt, made me feel so good that he he trusted me to pick up his daughter. Yeah, you know. Oh, yeah. The stories and how you get to touch oh. people's lives. Is oh, just... it's amazing. We it it makes you feel really good that you can give them this opportunity, but then it also tugs at your heart. That's like, oh, I want them to be whole. You want to do more? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 But you get to give them that peace that that's all they want. Yeah. I mean, sure, you know, I'm sure the, the biggest wish is to be whole. But to, that's all they're thinking about is what they're what they're experiencing right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and little Leah, she's like uh, her mother shared with me that, um, and she has a very strong faith. Her dad is a pastor, and uh, she actually prayed over dinner a couple of times while we were up there. But she said that Leah said she goes, "Oh, if you want one thing, what was it?" And I can't recall what it was, but it wasn't that. Hey, I want to walk. She just said, God gave this to me and, you know, um, my life is good and whatever plans he has for me. And I'm like, wow. That's incredible. Wow, I know. I mean, she's just uh, this 15-year-old. She's very intelligent, though. When she was four, her IQ, they tested her IQ, and she had the IQ of a seven-year-old at four. So very, she's 15 going on 25. Yeah. Very mature and intelligent. Yeah. Yeah, lots of more stories, but um, it, it is... Uh, you know, anyone can go to the website, anyone can apply, uh, the board selects which hunters, um, uh, are eligible for a hunt. Um, how many people usually apply? Oh, that's a good question. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, the focus is the kids, thus the name passing along the heritage. Yeah. Um, but Hey, it doesn't hurt to apply. So it's just passing along the heritage.com anyone who wants to go in there if they know a child that has a life-threatening illness or disability and they they want to hunt and they don't have the opportunity to that um yeah go in there and hunt they they'll look at their application so it's it doesn't cost them anything and they can bring along one person and everything's paid for their meals their lodging everything yeah that is so cool so your husband found and like partnered with with path is into a separate organization or how did that well he didn't um he didn't partner with them he <clears throat> excuse me from the get-go was a volunteer okay right i mean uh and Gosh, then as, yeah okay okay and then as he got in, more involved then the the previous president of the board said you know, hey i've been doing this for 10 years how about you do it <laughs> <laughs> so he was voted in um and he's helped to streamline things a, a lot you know with technology and whatnot so it's been good but um, his president term is two years. So uh, he just became president in January of this year. That's cool. A year flies by. Yep. <laughs> a year flies yeah, flies by. definitely, definitely. Oh. That is cool. So I've, I've heard you talking about that, but I, it's, it's so awesome to dive into that more. In, and also, I understand now where it's like, I want to come on and talk about this because that's just so moving to be able to see what you get out of that. I could imagine just being incredible because, you know, I'm talking about my little fantasy football team and this little like motivational story around that. You know, you have somebody that is going through something that, and they wouldn't even wish that I could walk or that I wouldn't just like, God gave me this for a reason. Whatever it is, 
you know, and that's, that's not what you'd wish. That's just so, such an incredible and inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we, um, you know, we have family and friends that come up and help us with the hunt and, uh, you know, they're, they're happy to do it. I mean, it's, it it really is great. And we've uh, accumulated so many more friends in the process, you know? Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's great. How one thing leads to another. How one thing leads to another. Yeah. In fact, um, having my business has led my husband and I to the church that we go to right now. So, uh, I don't know, like nine years ago, the well moved to their current location and they're a member of the chamber because churches, nonprofits can be members of the chamber as well. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, pastor Jeff is in my service. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you met him. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we went there for the ribbon cutting and, uh, I can't tell you what he said, Pastor Jeff. I just said, it really resonated with me. I'm like, wow, that's really good. And, uh, you know, been a Catholic my whole life up until three years ago. And when we were finding another church, all of a sudden it hit me. And I'm like, hey, remember what you thought like years ago? (laughs) So I went there first. And then um, I because we had gone to a few other churches and I, um, my husband was out punting. I'm like, Hey, I think you're really going to like this church. And he looks at me like another one. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is that, uh, my brother who lives up in the UP, his name is Jeff. My husband's only brother's name is Jeff. My son's middle name is Jeffrey. So if nothing else, there you go. And then, it's a sign. <laughs> yeah. and then the first time he went to the well in Pastor Jeff's sermon, he talks about when he used to hunt. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're going here. <laughs> so it is yeah. so cool how it all lines up. And um, there's a guest a few weeks ago that said, that, and this people say this all the time, and, and it can be very true that entrepreneurship is a very lonely place. And to me, it's been the most like it's been the biggest party I've been a part of. <laughs> like I've yeah. I, I've gotten the my the people in my life, the connections, the you know the friends, the relationships that I have are mm-hmm. so so much stronger. Um, just people I love to be around than just six years ago before I became an entrepreneur, you know, and it's just, it's, it's, it's it's cool how it opens up and you find again, whether it's a church or a new restaurant or a new, you know, we talk about uh, Michelle and the the work that she does and, you know, and I I love your cup. So it's like, you know, it's like uh, the things, right. And it's like these relationships that we, it's it's enriching. Yeah. Yeah. And Michelle's really cool because there was a, they wanted this plaque created for a gentleman who had been on the board and involved in PATH for years and his time here on earth was getting near the end. And so they uh, really wanted to have something special. And, and Steve, my husband called up Michelle and said, Hey, you know, here's the situation. Um, I know it's short notice, but is there any way you could do this in two days? And she did. Yeah. She's like, how can you say no to that? Yeah. Right. And yeah, she's such a great person. A little plug for her. Yeah, little, I know. It's a good, I love giving little name drops yeah, and plugs yeah. to people. You know, it's, uh, but it is. It's it's again. It's it's our it's our community, and whether it's serious yeah. or the chamber, we have a really yeah. strong, cool community. Yeah, my um, we were down at the Holiday Glow, and um, my son in law and daughter and his mom are in a real estate group, the Lots Group. Um, well, we'll put in a plug for them too. <laughs> and so he's like, "Okay, here's a competition. Let's see how many people you know." Mary Beth and how many people I know. I'm like, okay. <laughs> He's just joking, but it was funny. I was like, you know that person? I know that person. <laughs> that's that's when it gets fun. Yeah. When you, when you find the mutual yeah. connections. Yeah. I love how small the world gets and you know, and it we have a really cool community, but it's really cool when you meet somebody in this community and you're tied together to somebody that's out in some other state, you know, somehow. Yeah. Throughout the relationship and you yeah. find out as you get to know each other. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's one, been one of the blessings uh, with my business. And, and first and foremost, it, it is to be a resource to people who are looking for uh, ways to support their health. Um, you know, I don't treat or diagnose, and I'm very honest about that. Um, but I do have about, oh, 20 plus years of education. <laughs> because that's the nice thing. I get to learn from 
doctors, nurses, naturopaths, and, uh, you know, and it's not just about the products. It's about a lifestyle and, and our food and really encouraging people, hey, you know, here's what you can do. Like I offer healthy seminars that are not affiliated with Shackley. And I love teaching those because it, it reiterates with myself, you know. So solutions on stress is a big one for the obvious reasons. Um, and I kind of laugh too, because to go back a little bit, uh, it just popped in my head. So March of 2020, we all know what happened then. And up until that point, that was March of 2020 was the best month I'd ever had in my business. Because I could do it from home. Yeah. And people now said, hey, these are the things I need to support my also health. health was a, was a priority. Right, right. So that was uh, incredible. And I was happy to be there. And just calling people up. You know, I knew a lot of people that um, live by themselves. And I wanted to reach out to them and say, hey, how are you doing? You know, um, anything I can do for you? And, uh, and I was happy to do that with no ulterior motive. Yeah. I just wanted to know how they were doing. How does that work out though? Because there's no ulterior motive, and I, I do the same thing, and especially during 2020, so many people are isolated and they're just reaching out. I'm sitting at home, I'm mm-hmm. calling, texting people, that kind of thing. In uh, in it, it may it wasn't something that was like you got business then, but for me, it was it was the foundation of a lot of relationships that are core relationships to this day. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, um, just keeping that relationship. No one else called, you know, maybe even a family member didn't, I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, but you called and that really meant a lot to me. And so, uh, you know, they knew I didn't mean, I didn't mention Shackley and say, Hey, you know, you need some vitamin C or whatever. No. <laughs> I just said, I just want to know how you are doing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that was good. Well, that's cool. It's, it, it, it's like a quick pivot for the like that was like the word of 2020 was like pivot but but you realized very pretty quickly that i can do this from home where a lot of people at that time were like what do i do yeah i mean and a lot of people are like hey i think i'd like working from home you know um but yeah was that a huge piece did did you see a bump in your business from that because there were a lot of people i saw in that time that like they realized they got to be home and they realized i hate what i'm doing you know, from a job standpoint, and there was a lot of people that started businesses or were looking for maybe their purpose, passion, or something that relieved them from the thing they realized they hated doing. Well, you know, it is good to work from home, but you do have to be disciplined and um, have a schedule, whether, you know, that you make, because it's not going to be your boss, because you're your own boss. I joke about, my boss is really cool. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But, you know, when people, not, it's not for everyone, and that's okay. Yeah, it's true. That's you know, so true. Uh, there, I just hadn't met those people. You know, uh, they would start it, and then like, well, my job's calling me back. I've got benefits. So I have to go back. You know, um, they use the products, but it just wasn't for them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm still looking for those people <laughs> because I, I would love to, um, yes, expand my business, but expanding my business means I get to help even more people either directly or indirectly. Yeah. And that is so rewarding. You know, like what you do with your coaching, like I still remember my coach, Yep. you know, and I, I know that was really cool. I resonated when you said yeah, that because it's yeah. like, that's, ah, I wonder, you know, like, that's so cool to think of like, you remember to remember that person from all those years later. Oh yeah. Yeah. I just saw her because she actually had their conference in Kansas city at 20, 2021. No, that was last year, 2022. And that's where she lives. She lives in that area. So I get to see her because I hadn't seen her in years. But yeah, I mean, when, when you have a good coach and they teach you these things, it's like, it just, it keeps resonating with you. Like somebody teaches you how to ride a bike, right? That's a big yeah. saying. Like, you know, it's like riding a bike. <laughs> and it is when you have those tools uh, you utilize them. And it's they the work. tools to utilize. And it's so cool because you worked with her so long ago, but you still talk about those tools that you got from her. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my best compliments I got was just a few weeks ago, a, a, a client that I've worked with for quite a while. Um, she's been crushing it and just building her business and, and doing a great 
job. She had this really like we were kind of recapping what had happened over this course of time. And we had not she was out and she just had this horrible just thing. Bad things were happening. And Mm -hmm. she was talking about there's so many times I was going to call you. But then I remembered the things that we took that we talked about. And I just kept plugging and doing those. And I kept plugging and doing those instead of like reaching out and being like, oh, my God, I need help. I just kept doing those things. And then poof, here I am. You know, like it nice. just instead of like worrying about it and stressing about it, there's things we had to do, but I just kept plugging and doing. The, and she was like, and that is like from a coaching standpoint, the best thing you can say for a coach is that I didn't have to call you again, that I could keep taking yeah. that those tools that you gave me yeah. in and plugging away. And then her story, she shares it with others to, hey, you need to call Jason. This Absolutely. Is I, right. I mean, that's, that's, the that's great. That's great advertisement. It's, it is. It Not is. that she had to go through some stuff, but that she got through it. Yeah. yeah. We all go through stuff. Hers was, <laughs> hers was intense. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was intense, but, mm-hmm. but she's, she's that person. And that's the, the people I love to work with is those um, people you drop in a jungle and they'll come out riding a lion, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> I, love I love that analogy. <laughs> that's those great. Are, those are just always the people that I really connected well and, and mentored and developed really well from my job standpoint. And when I got into, started my business and coaching, it was like, I can help everybody. And it's just not true. <laughs> you know, like I feel like I could right. and I, I probably could, but can, you can't lead a horse to water. You can't make them drink. And there's some people that just won't take the action or there's some people that don't connect with me for one reason or another. And that's, you know, you're not going to connect with everybody. Right. Mm-hmm. I got this first client that after I was just struggling, I'm like, maybe I'm not meant to coach. Like maybe this is just, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> Anyway, so I got this, this first client that, uh, that he literally, before he even paid me, we sat down and did a consultation session. And then he was like, I don't know how I'm going to pay you, but I'm going to, we're going to do it. He went out and he took the advice and the things that we talked about in the initial consultation and went out and landed enough clients to pay for the next three months to coach with me. And it was like, this is my guy right here. This is like the magic's inside of him. He just needs somebody to, 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 to help on on cage that magic, you know, help him realize that then and grow that confidence, develop that confidence. And once he did, he exploded. It was like, I need to realize those are the people that I, that I work with. Well, the people that I can to say the truth and they're not so horribly offended that they never call me back. <laughs> uh, yeah. And some people are just not coachable. They You're just right. don't want to learn. Some people are just very comfortable doing what they're doing now, but then miserable with the results they're getting. And when you suggest that, hey, maybe you do this, you know, try these little bit different things, like, but I'm comfortable doing what I'm doing, then be comfortable with the results then, because mm-hmm. the, what you're doing is creating the results. Yeah. Yeah. God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. That's exactly it. And that's my favorite thing to say from a sales standpoint, from, mm-hmm. from sales coaching. It, most, most people feel like the m- number one question I get asked is what is the, what's the magic word I can say? What's the magic thing? You know, what's the magic phrase or whatever that will get somebody to buy? And it's like, there's no thing, you know, mm-hmm. so you got to ask questions and is it a good fit? Mm-hmm. Can you help that person? Right. Right. Oh not, yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, in any sales position, whatever you're selling, you know, you're basically selling yourself, right? Yeah. And, I, and, you know, I am too, because people have to relate to me to want to do something, you know, whatever it may be, because, you know, I, it's not just about, hey, I'll sell you a product and see you in a while. It's about you bought this product, but that's not the only thing that can help you with whatever's going on with them. Um, and I'm here to support you. So let's follow up in a week, you know, give you some time to get it into your regiment. Let's see how you do. Well, because for you, it's not like, it's not the product. The product is like the surface problem, right? What's causing their problems is more of a, a root issue. Mm-hmm. So it's maybe not one product. Mm-hmm. It's a whole a change of their, of their diet and re-education of, because going back to your original problem, you didn't know you were eating what you thought was natural. Mm-hmm. It was told that you were told that it was a, it was good for you. You're mm-hmm. told that it was healthy and natural, you know, mm-hmm. and that's so overused. What's organic and what's natural? Mm-hmm. You know, what, yeah. when you go to a store, <laughs> they say it's natural. What does that even mean? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that's a broad term because anything that's grown on the earth, really, you could say it's natural. It's natural. 
there's a lot of things growing on the earth that aren't good for us. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> exactly. <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah, it is that education and, um, you know, what sets me apart, what it sets apart the company that I partner with. And it's, it's both. It's, uh, you know, who I am and I care about people. And, um, I mean, the company has been around for 67 years. It's not by chance. They know what they're doing. It's a good business model as well as, uh, above organic grade products. You carry a burger with you, right? From the, <laughs> like, I'm like, I've yeah. been to one of, your, one of your events that you spoke at, and yeah. I remember you pulling this burger out. <laughs> you have a name for it, and I can't remember what it Bob is. Bob the Burger. Bob the Burger. <laughs> How old is Bob the Burger? Bob is now 16 years old. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. No mold. Not on the bun, the meat, nothing. <laughs> Never put it in the fridge. Don't know if that would have helped anyway, but <laughs> does that make any yeah. difference? No, that uh, is insanity. That it's like a completely intact burger at 16 years old. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's people really need to wake up and realize that what they're putting in their bodies can either reduce the risk of illness and disease or encourage it. You know, inflammation is a very big reason why people are not well. And I am not here judging at all. It's, it's, this is an education piece, yep. right? So you want to keep your body um, alkaline and, and, you know, drink water. I mean, we see each other at the gym. That's good too. I mean, there's so many good things. And I, my, my diet and my lifestyle is not perfect. So what I teach people is, you know, if you can eat healthy and do healthy things 80% of the time, then 20% of the time have your treats yeah. because we don't live in a plastic bubble. We just don't. But the food that you eat, you should know whether it's a steak or a piece of fish or whatever, you know? So yeah, it's, that's important. Well, it all ties in. And again, we're talking about from an entrepreneur standpoint, we need our energy. We, you know, we, we need that clarity if we're operating in, a fog because we've consumed so much sugar or, you know, we're consuming, we're, we have a bed, we're not drinking water, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, we're like getting fast food burgers because it's quick and easy and we've got, you know, we're busy and we've got this lifestyle. And so to, to just sit back and take a few steps back and say, are you feeling tired at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. or are you, are you feeling drag? Are you dragging throughout this day? Because mm -hmm. what can be improved there? Right. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I <laughs> I tell people I was looking for energy in all the wrong places. <laughs> Instead of that song, remember the old song, Looking for Love in all the wrong places? <laughs> yeah, it was Diet Coke, coffee. It's like, oh, none of this is working. What's going on? So uh, that's how I educate people. It's like protein, man, it's going to sustain your blood sugars. I shouldn't probably give all this information out because nobody's going to call me then. <laughs> no, but they do. No. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing, you know, yeah. like the, it's like the, um, even, even these clips, it's like putting it out because then people listen to it and it's like, they want to know, they want to know more because yeah. even the coaching standpoint, you know, I'll tell somebody everything I know about sales, you know, but now go do it. You know, now mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there's a difference between knowing and then going and putting it in action. And a lot of times we need that person or somebody to be there. It's more of the support, right? Oh, yeah. You know, I'm a big one of, hey, please hold me accountable. I, because then I will ensure not that I do it, but go above and beyond, right? I want, I want to be held accountable. Uh, so even though you're an entrepreneur, you're always going to have someone that you have to be held accountable to your mm -hmm. coaching clients, your customers, mm -hmm. right? Your, yeah, just your bills. Like, got to put gas in the car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, even though you're, I, I say to people, you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. Because that's what's really nice. I've worked in corporate America and it was, it was backstabbing, you know? I mean, the person in the mail room won't make as much money as the, the president unless he gets to that, that position. Yeah. But in Shackley, um, it's multi-level marketing, which has gotten a bad rap, but it's not a pyramid. Corporate America is a pyramid. 
you know, when you have the top person, he makes, he or she makes the most money. No one else can make as much as him. And Shackley, if I sponsor someone into Shackley, they can make as much or more than me. There's no, there's no limit. Yeah. So it's, it really is a good gig if you want to call it that. Um, good side gig if say, hey, you know, I just need some extra income or I love my job, but it's not really paying. It pays the bills, but I want to do more. You know, I want to put my kids through college or I want to go on that vacation to Puerto Vallarta, you know, uh, do those kinds of things. Um, I, I want to have a nice car because they actually, when you get to certain ranks, they help pay your car payment. And it's not a pink car. <laughs> you can get any car you want. <laughs> yeah. So, um, although that company, that's really nice that they do that. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, I really enjoy it. I mean, yeah, that the, the people that I've met and the stories that I've heard, cause I know you've mentioned that too. You get to meet all these really cool people. Yeah. So, so going back to, so the, the one conference that I was at, the one Shackley conference, and I'm thinking about the, the two boys that were born with their sight, but then they, they lost their sight. There's actually Eric Weinheimer is, has climbed the seven top peaks in the world, and he had the same illness as those boys. Wow. Yeah, he's blind. And in part of his book, The Awakening, might be doing a spoil alert, they want to read the book. But anyway, um, the one person that helped him like get over your pity party of one was the bus driver that took him to school. You never know where you're, where that person is going to come from. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. But anyhow. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I am really blessed with my life. It's, it's been really good. Who's been that person that's been the big encourager for you? Ah. <sighs> Oh, um, well, my husband, because yeah. he was like, yeah, stay home with the kids. And that's where it evolved. You know, I was able to get involved with the school and stuff. And, and it wasn't the big bucks overnight uh, by any means, you know, um, it wasn't until, and it was me, no one else, but like 2010 was like, uh, the year that, uh, it started growing and doing really well. Uh, but I persevered, you know, I just, I really believe in the company. I have faith in the company, the products, the things that I've learned. Uh, and, um, you know, I tell people, I just want to go out kicking and screaming, man. I, <laughs> I don't want to live to be old. Well, I go, well, I don't want to be, you know, dependent upon people. I yeah. want to thrive in my life. Yes. You yeah. Know? Even more so now because, <laughs> I'll be 66 in a few weeks. <laughs> oh, dang. Yeah. But you look phenomenal. Well, like, what's 66, you. you know? Yeah, right? Um, I mean, I know. I was, like, hurrying around doing, you know, house cleaning the other day, and I'm like, oh, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? You do, you do what others won't now, so you can do what others can't later. Wait, say that again? You do what others won't now, yeah. so you can do what others can't later. Oh, Yeah. I that like was always it. one that I loved. I yeah. don't know. I don't know who said it, but uh, but it's yeah. a good quote. And it's, yeah, it is. It's true. You know, going to the gym, like going. To, and I have friends that I'm, I'm 44, and so I have friends that are like, "You play basketball? <laughs> yeah, twice a week, and it's high level. And I play against kids that are like half my age. You know, wow. like in nice. um, I do what you know. I go to the gym and I work out because mm -hmm. I want to be functional and be able to run up and down that court. And you yeah. know, in 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 play against 20 year olds if I, if I'm matched up against them, yeah. I had a, I, there's this kid, he's a senior in high school. I played against last Saturday and there was a group of high school kids and they looked at us old men coming across on the court, on the winner's court. And the one kid said, get ready to run guys. And I'm like, bring it. Cause I'm a runner, like uh -huh. not a runner. I, you won't see me running around town. Yeah. Uh, but when I'm on the basketball court, I'm going to run your face off. And yeah. so that's my game. And mm -hmm. so this kid thought he was going to rebound it and take me full court. Mm -hmm. And he got all the way down the court and didn't realize I was still there and went up for a shot and was like, bam blocked you know like <laughs> in the look on his face when he saw i was still there because mm -hmm. he was telling me yeah i'm a cross-country runner i've only been off in cross-country practice for a week i'm like great man you're gonna you might kill me like he was like joking around <laughs> i'm gonna because like i'm still gonna outrun you i'm 44 years old i'm gonna outrun you like nice. i do what nice. others won't now so that i can do what others can't now yeah. and later yeah yeah 
Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, I don't go in there to, Hey, I can bench press 200. Not at my age. Won't do it. I don't know if I could have done that at any, age. <laughs> but, um, you know, I go in there to keep tone because exercise is so much more than, uh, you know, big biceps or, um, I don't know, just I yeah. do it to tone and, and exercise actually helps your immune system. Did you know that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Um, it also helps with, uh, you know, your joints and, and supporting your bones. Uh, so de-stressor. Yeah. You talk about de-stressing yep. from hunting. Yeah. Yep. It's a great de-stressor. Yeah. It's a thing that you can control. Mm-hmm. We talked about the beginning in, what, what talked, in entrepreneurship and life in general. There are so many things that you can't control. Mm-hmm. I can control it. I wake up every day and go to the gym. Yeah. Yeah. And I can control the results that I get from that, from doing that consistently across a long period of time. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, uh, September was a really busy month for us and we were, I was out of town more than in town and uh, went on a cruise and that's oh, got a lot of steps know. in, but there was a <laughs> lot of food. And like, okay. You don't want that. You don't want that. You got to be careful. So I really need to reacclimate in October. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, uh, just being active, uh, people just don't realize that and, and stretching is so important. Yes. Really important, uh, before and after a sport, a workout, anything. It's, um, uh, it's something that again, as I'm, as I'm getting older, probably, you know, in yeah. your twenties, your teens, maybe even your thirties, you don't maybe take it seriously Mm -hmm. Uh, because I want to perform and do things at a higher level. I've got a, I'm stretching all the time. I'm opening up my hips, you know, doing things and it's, it's helped my athletic, right. My, uh, my athleticism. But Mm -hmm. again, I'm not, I had every time I'd stand up, I'd get this lower back pain, Mm -hmm. you know, and it was like, I tried to do things to get my lower back strong, but it was like, do you know, it's all in your hips. Yeah. Like that lower back is like all from like tight hips. And so I, I, found it because you can find any resource right i found out what's what's the cause of it and i just started stretching and Mm -hmm. i don't have that lower back pain anymore and i I can move in ways that i don't know if i've ever been able to move like this well it's all connected you know if you think about it it is but if we don't use it we lose it right but the good news is is you can get it back because i was real stiff and now i can do things with my like my legs and you know move them in ways that i can never could before yeah fantastic at 44 right yeah good for you that's it great. feels good, but yeah. I, it's, it's good for me. And I, and I do, I, I do know that I've been blessed with a certain amount of athleticism that I did not realize I had back in high school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wish that yeah. I did, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, um, I realize that there's, that I, that I have certain blessings from that, but there's all the things that I took and put into my control and researched and, you know, learned because I wanted to. And so taking that into my control, it's like, Thank you, <laughs> because it is something yeah. that, that we can do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think I'm here people, intentionally. Yeah, people underestimate themselves. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. Well, Absolutely. you know, if you keep saying that, you're right. You're never going to. Right. You're never yeah. going to. No, I've yeah. never met a person, whether you're male or female, white or black, no matter what your ethnicity or no matter what your economical status was, that could outthink their belief system. Mm. You, whether yeah. you th- think you can or you think you can't either way you're right and yeah. so yep. people will tell me all the time I can't I don't remember people's names very well when you say when you've committed to your mind that you'll never remember people's names very well you're never going to remember people's names very well you say oh, I couldn't go play basketball at 44 like what's the first step to that the first step is just going out to the playground you know in the summer and just shooting some hoops yeah uh, you know, like it's just, it starts with baby steps. Like I, I sure. didn't just go out and start playing. I've had to mm-hmm. put a lot of time into my game in order to get to the level that I'm at mm-hmm. now. But like, yeah. and it's funny to say that, that at 44 years old, I'm, I'm literally practicing on my game because I, and I'm, I'm better at basketball now than I've ever been in my whole entire life. Nice. And that's, that's so fantastic. cool to say, but yeah. like, it's so true. Yeah. I, hey, I, I like that. That's incredible. And I'm like, Good for you. So my son's a sophomore <laughs> in high school uh-huh. and there's a, there was a point in probably seventh grade that he, he could beat me. Like he's a good yeah. shooter and yeah. he, you know, we'd be in the driveway and like, I'd be like, I'm not trying, I'm, I'm not letting him win anymore. I'm trying and he'd beat me and we're now back to the point where I'm beating him. And so, and he's getting better. He's gotten a lot better. Uh, yeah. but that's, you know, again, I'm looking at it like I'm going to continue getting better and better and better and like, yeah. We can do that. We can control when we put the work in. Yeah. 
He's tall like you, though, too, isn't he? He's like 5'11". Okay. And how tall are you? 6'3", almost 6'3". Okay. So. Okay. He's physical, though. He, yeah. Uh, he, he's, in fact, I'd, I'd rather play some guy that's uh, just as tall as me uh, in the post because he just, like, bangs me in the, you know, like, he's, <laughs> he takes guarding me very seriously. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then okay. I got to chase him, too, so. Yeah. It's fun. Fun. That's great. You can do that. I, I love that. Yeah. It's we just a thing, but it's like about health. You know, yeah. we, we, there are things that we can control mm-hmm. w- within our health. Yeah. I mean, um, my mom was a big encourager of health. She was one of the first recipients of uh, Weight Watchers when it came to Michigan because it was just in New York. Um, Weight Watchers is good because it does teach people how to eat sensibly. But back then, they were a huge proponent of artificial sweeteners. And sorry, guys, but. It's just, there's just not good for you. And the reason being is our bodies are really smart because it, um, we react to it in a negative way because our bodies are saying, Hey, this isn't good. It's not, it isn't natural. Right. Yep. Um, our body doesn't know how to process it. Right. Right. I mean, it can have a, um, it's been shown that it has a negative effect on your mental acuity and, um, actually your pancreas too. So, uh, gotta be careful of those. And there's some good healthy sugars that are lower in calories, little tidbit there, that you can use instead of artificial sweeteners. Yeah. So. Very bad. Thank you so much for coming down and sharing, that, especially the stuff about PATH and, and, and the work you're doing. That's just so, so incredible. Uh, but I, I loved hearing more about your story. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm, this has been great. I love doing this. I learned about you too. So that's the, that's the whole key about yeah, this, right? Yeah. It's just, it's like I said before uh, we started, it's like just having a conversation with a friend over coffee. That's yeah. what this is all about. Yeah. We get to yeah. learn about each other as we have conversation. Stories yeah. are data with soul. Yeah. And now you've got a coffee named after. It fits right? in the process. Oh, it's in the it process. It is in the process. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. you gotta let us know when that comes about so we can go buy some. <laughs> Grant is the uh, the genius behind the coined lion's breast. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. You're too, you're too kind, Jason. I am, <laughs> I am amped for that though. I can't wait. Well, we have it on recording. You can't even deny it. It was a, it was a natural organic process of <laughs> the guest that I had on talking about. Yeah, oh, yeah. You Corey, listen to Dylan. Yeah. Corey, what was his last Dylan, name? Dylan. Dylan. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 He was great. I love that episode. He's really wow. He's he's awesome. He I got is. I got a chance to go out to his office uh, a few weeks ago and yeah. do a, a podcast out of his office. So that was that was cool. Yeah. I got to taste his coffee. Nice. So that was uh, oh, yeah. yeah, we we did And did it. you like it? It was good. It's really yeah. good. Uh it's um so Taylor Hollis is the one that makes it and she's um she's you know, we're now back and forth and she uh-huh. sent me my samples and so we're yeah. we're working on some stuff. Uh but uh she makes a um she uh air roasts the coffee and yeah. so it's low acidity. Nice. Uh, yeah, I remember that. And now. so he was talking about his is specifically even lower acidity, but her, her all of her coffees are diff- are low low acidity. So mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. It's cool beans coffee. Another shout out for Taylor. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, super cool. I ended the coffee nice. to answer you. His is really good. And then she sent me three samples. I got a light roast, a medium roast, and a dark roast. And I, I liked all three. The medium was my favorite. You know, that sounds like that'd be mine too. Cause I don't like anything really dark. And then the light roast, um, I know she air roasts them, but for less time. So that means there's more caffeine yes. in it. Yes, so. which is so funny because I think most people think that dark roasts have more caffeine. Mm-hmm. And when I was talking to her, I was kind of getting educated on coffee. I think most people drink dark roast because they think with that taste <laughs> that there's, there's more <laughs> caffeine like, in it. No. Nope, you've roasted out all the caffeine. <laughs> <Yeah. and> that, <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah. Man, so I've been drinking worse coffee this whole time. Right? Yeah. For nothing is what you're telling me. Medium is a good amount of caffeine. Light roast is the most amount of caffeine. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. Good I've, been do- I've been drinking Hang garbage on. coffee all this time. <laughs> 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 you haven't been drinking garbage. It's no. just not as much caffeine. So if you're wondering why you weren't getting that kick, now you know. Oh man! See, see, this is why you got to work with Jason. You learn all sorts of stuff. All sorts of stuff. So hey, if, if you if you didn't learn in something, you know, you got something out of this. So yeah. maybe, maybe you all can throw away that dark coffee if you don't like it. <laughs> yeah. uh, hers was actually because I'm not typically a dark roast fan, but hers was actually really really good. Well, with, with it being air roast, that's mm-hmm. probably why. Yep. It yeah. didn't have that yeah. really kick, you know? Yeah. 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 Maybe that's okay. been awesome. It Thanks has. so much. And, 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 hey, I learned something too. I learned that your company name is the same initial. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that's amazing yeah oh because my daughter so, that's awesome yeah, yeah good well thank you so much this has been amazing my pleasure <laughs>